Hi everyone, Tessa here. Oh, we have some people already coming in. We're just getting started, so we have the broadcast started up, but just um, when you come into the room, just say hi, let me know you're here. Tell me where you're, call where you're um, watching us from. Hi, Laura. I'm actually just gonna... I'm, I'm so excited. Fred's actually coming. We're, we're getting all of our ducks in a row here, so he'll be with us momentarily. We have some great questions that came in from our partners. And yay, so Fred's back. Uh, Fred, mm -hmm. we had we're we're live now <laughs> because one of the lovely things about be live is you have to start right on time so we went ahead and started i'm just getting people in the room to say hi yeah so we have laura who already put up a uh, um a comment she says really looking forward to hearing the wisdom from fred with an impressive track with what an impressive track record she says That's easy for you to say yeah i know <laughs> and we have aziza on um most hello of aziza yeah, Nathan Lamister, Timbo Brown, Susan. We have lots of people. <laughs> and I don't, uh, Fred, from your side, can you see the people that are coming in or is it just a plain screen for you? Um, no, I can't really see. All okay. I have is Laura's gonna... coming up in front of your face. Oh, there's okay, most okay. up. <laughs> yep. So I'm saying, so we have a couple of people. I'm gonna go ahead and have, I'm just gonna show people's comments to you and you can say hi as we go. Just to, Yeah, yeah. Hi, Mosa. How are you? Okay, excellent. Well, thank you guys all for joining us. Um, I'm here with Fred uh, Carey. He is co-founder and executive, oh my gosh, I just, um, yeah, there you go, <laughs> of Idea Pros. And, um, and right now I lost my screen too. So I'm just gonna take a second here to grab back my Word document. Excellent. Thank you guys for joining us. And um, I'm going to keep putting up some comments. But I may get Fred started on some some topics because we had so many wonderful questions. Uh, this is about what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur. We had so many people reply with questions that they wanted to have us ask. So I'm not going to uh, to spend any more time on that. I'm just going to throw some questions at Fred and then continually put some comments up on the screen for Fred. So Aziza asks, what do you believe are the five most important factors to being an entrepreneur? Well, um, I can tell you Ziza has them all. Uh, we're uh, just getting ready to launch her product, uh, Raw Beauty Co. You're going to be seeing it. Uh, we're going to have a live launch page. It's going to be up in less than a, a couple of weeks. And um, Aziza and I um, do a lot of this. You know, when, when you're an entrepreneur and when you have a partner, um, you really, both of you really have to stand up for your principles and, and go back and forth with each other. And when you, when you don't think something's good enough, uh, continue to push. And um, I have a few relationships like that where, where it's just been sla almost slapping back and forth. And we're, we end up with really, really great results. And I think that... Uh, Aziza's new uh, beauty line is just going to hit it out of the park. It's just uh, amazing. I can't wait to really try it myself. Obviously, I need it. Um, but, uh, but to her question, uh, now that I've uh, uh, finished pumping her up, um, <laughs> you know, I, I really think it's only one thing. I, I don't think that there's five factors. Um, I think you need to ask yourself, you know, are you prepared to, to, to get up every morning and stare into that mirror and uh, just say to yourself, I'm going to do whatever it takes, however long, how many failures, whatever. I know this is the right thing. I'm going to do my best every single day to make it happen. And when I fail, I'm not going to treat it as a failure. I'm going to treat it as a learning experience. So I learn or I succeed. Those are my only two choices, not failure. And that really goes down to the heart of, of being an entrepreneur. Uh, that's the most important factor. The, the ability to have your friends and family tell you you're crazy, you know, stick to your nine to five job and, and you're going to uh, just be happy there. You're going to get a raise. You're going to become the vice president and everything's going to be peachy keen. You'll have a great 401k plan. 
Um, but an entrepreneur raids their 401k plan in order to, to start one of their ventures. You know, we are crazy. Entrepreneurs are crazy people. <laughs> and they're also some, they drop out of the best colleges in the world. Uh, and they're also some of the most successful people in the world. Um, and so you, you have to be, um, you have to have this extraordinary belief in yourself to really be an entrepreneur and, and be willing to do anything uh, to make that happen. Now, um, that's being an entrepreneur. What does it take to be a successful entrepreneur, which is uh, the real question uh, here of the day. Um, being a successful entrepreneur means letting go of a little bit of what I was just talking about. Um, waking up in the morning and uh, looking in that mirror and knowing that you're going to do it, but questioning yourself. Am I doing it the right way? Is this the way to go? Have I covered all my bases? And, and that successful entrepreneur stops listening to themselves and begins listening to the voice of their probable customer. And that's why in Idea Pros, we spend so much time researching and doing surveys and, and pivoting what we have because we know we're onto something good, but a successful entrepreneur finds out how to package that thing so that the customers are really, really going to want it. And um, so be an entrepreneur, be crazy, be a successful entrepreneur, listen. And, and when you listen and when you can let go of some of that pride that you have, this is my baby, this is how I designed it, this is what I want it to be, when you can let go of some of that, you're going to end up with some incredibly amazing uh, things. So. I love it. That's great. And we have... We actually have a lot of people giving uh, thumbs up and hearts on all of what you just said <laughs> just thank now. You, so that's awesome. I believe her. I can't see any of it. I know. I, know. I promise. <laughs> um, so one of the other questions that we have that came through was from Sean Reed. And he asks, how do you deal with people that are too impatient to allow their dreams to develop into reality? <laughs> Well, hello, Sean. Uh, Sean is one of the most positive, hardworking partners uh, that we have. Um, when we first started, Sean overwhelmed me with his notes. He had everything figured out, and uh, and it was all great material, but a lot of it was too early. Uh, Sean had a, a little bit of that impatience in the beginning. You know, where where do we go? And he and I sat and we we talked about things, and he's really step back and, and interact incredibly with our project managers and our designers, um, but really understands the fact that if you want to build something well, you have to do it the right way. And it goes back to my prior question um, that I answered about being a, an entrepreneur and what makes a successful entrepreneur. A successful entrepreneur doesn't just want to make things, they want to make things right. And so the, the suicidal uh, tendencies of uh, an entrepreneur that may not be successful uh, are all around time. You know, I have this vision. I have six months that I want to do this. I, you know, in my eighth month, I have to do this. That um, rigid belief that time is your friend is going to kill you. Time is not your friend when you're an entrepreneur. You're making something that didn't exist before. You think you're going to do it right and perfectly every single time you, you touch it. When you wake up in the morning, you start working, it's going to be exactly right. Never. I can guarantee you, never. Thomas Edison, right? He um, was asked a question about um, how does it feel to have a thousand failures in uh, making a light bulb? And his answer was, it was a thousand steps to make a light bulb, not a thousand failures. And, and that's how you have to think as an entrepreneur. You're going to have roadblocks. We just had one on an app project uh, yesterday. That, that It came in and the price point for it was quadruple what we expected it to be. It was devastating. Um, we, got, we got on the horn with uh, the back-end developers. We spent a couple hours all working together, working with our partner, and we managed to work through it and get it right and, and, and get that price where, where it needed to be so that, so that we could um, 
do the job that needed to be done. So time is bad. If you're an entrepreneur and you're impatient, then you're well on your way to failure. Um, if um, you go to chapter two of my book, Now What? You can get on Amazon, but you guys get it for free, uh, my partners. Uh, and that really talks about that same subject, to, to actually take your time. Have um, methodology. Be really methodical in the things you do and the steps that you take and the order in which they happen. But forget about the clock. You know, we all want to get things done quickly, but the most important thing is getting them done correctly. And that's what somebody who's impatient needs to understand. Uh, we can do things a, a lot faster than we should, but we're not going to be able to succeed for sure. Absolutely. And, and Laura's actually just putting up some of your clips right now of uh, quotes that you're saying online. So I just wanted to put one up there. You know, if you want to build something well, you have to do it the right way. I mean, there's so many good things in there. So I'm going to put those there in the Facebook post uh, okay. and then we'll, uh, we'll actually put them out as well. Um, but I love that. And I know, I, I think I shot, saw Sean Reed on just a little bit ago, um, but we have a couple other questions to ask. And I know we have so many questions that people are bringing into the chat right now. Really good questions. And guys, I am so excited. We're going to keep them all and make sure that we do these live sessions with Fred um, frequently to keep his uh, words of wisdom going out to people for sure. So we have... Working. Yeah, exactly. And and also, I mean, I think it's just helpful. People don't realize the resource that they have in you. And, you know, the, the people that are considering getting their invention going or their product app idea, I mean, they just don't know the resource that they have. So that's why we want to start offering these live sessions to help, um, help people to, you know, it's amazing what you're doing to help people. Uh, in their businesses and in just the business community. So um, one question that we got was uh, as for entrepreneurs with limited personal capital, what are some of the strategies that we can implement to set our business ventures up for success financially? Well, I mean, I guess that's another trait of an entrepreneur, right? Uh, they have limited personal capital. Uh, it happens with, with all of us. Um, before I answer the question directly, I have to tell you, uh, when I was in my 20s, I saved for five years to get this 36-foot sailboat that I wanted. I wanted so badly. Five years, I got the boat. Nobody would teach me how to, how to sail, so I went out and got some Coast Guard books and learned how to sail, and I'm plugging along, sailing away for about a month. And then I came up with an idea, uh, and within two weeks, I sold my sailboat. Um, that I saved for five years. I sold it to, to move forward with, with this new idea that I had. And um, so the point is, uh, an entrepreneur with limited capital resources finds capital. Uh, and they find it in, in many different ways. Some, some, like I have, and I alluded to earlier, go into the 401k plans. They get a second mortgage. They borrow from their friends, their family. Uh, they find an angel investor. Working with, with uh, idea pros really helps as well because uh, if you're an entrepreneur with limited capital resources, we're really cutting down the cost of uh, what you need to do by probably around 75%. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to hand you $400,000. That means that if there is a budget and that budget looks like it's going to be a half a million dollars for you to launch, we're picking up a whole bunch of that because we're doing all that work to become your partner. And so we cut off about 75% of the time and 75% of the money required to, to do that. But not everybody has that luxury. And if you go um, again onto uh, my book, I forget, go ahead. The, the, uh, I don't have the, uh, yeah, Laura, I will just, uh, Laura, if you don't mind putting the link to the ebook uh, in the chat, that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, okay. so and I think I it's chapter four, anyway, uh, about raising, raising money. Uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, the thing that every entrepreneur should do, and we have right now, we have a dozen products that are just getting ready to launch, Aziza's and, uh, and 11 others. And it's going to be really cool because we're doing, um, 
a bunch of contests and things. We're just gathering email addresses at first to get people really interested in these products. And that's one thing that, that entrepreneurs can do that don't take a lot of money when, when they have cap capital uh, restrictions. You know, have these contests, get people interested. Look at the story of Harry's Razors. Just uh, go online, how did Harry's Razors launch? They got 100,000 email addresses in a week. And they did it by doing similar contests to what we're going to be doing. Doesn't cost very much money. You're giving people discounts on a product that hasn't been built yet, and you're getting a lot of buzz. You know, that's one thing you can do. Another thing in the book really talks about going to your connections for everything. I'm getting ready to launch. I am going to write to every single person I know. Please support me. All I need you to do is go on my site and put down your email address. And ask everybody that you know to do the same thing. And you start building that viral um, component of growth internally with the people that you know, the people who have been watching you grow through this. You'd be surprised how big a network can become. But start there. And then with um, uh, so limited marketing budgets, you can continue that flow and, and, and get it up to the point where you need to. So not everybody's gonna launch and have a home run. you know. Some people are going to launch and have a single or a strike or two. That's normal. That's what happens. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be embarrassed by that. Don't think you're a loser or it's a terrible idea or idea pros is a bad partner because I didn't make $10 million in the first week I launched. Realize that we are in a really solid place. And if our sales start trickling in instead of pouring in, we know that we're onto something and you have to keep working, grinding, 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 grinding away as, as a successful entrepreneur. I love that. Well, and that question came from, I just want to make sure I, I give the attribution to Eric Held, uh, who asked okay. that question specifically about the personal capital and you had some really good an answers in there. So uh, thank you. Now, is Eric, Eric a partner? Eric, I think I, I saw here, and this is just a little bit off topic, but I'm gonna I'm gonna answer it anyway because it gives me another opportunity to say something nice about my book. Uh, Eric asked, um, you know, if I had to pick just three books, uh, what what book should should every entrepreneur read? Um, number one, I think I think you should read my book, and I wrote my book for our partners. Now, the reason that I, I think you should read my book is not because I'm um, some writing genius that, that, that just you know, tells these amazing stories. My book is really instructional and it goes through everything you really need to do to, to be an entrepreneur. You know, it talks about the steps that they're gonna be in front of you before you know it. And um, not only is the book not long, 50, 60 pages, um, and, and it, very informative, but it gives you 26 different videos to watch. There's dozens of um, reports that you need to read. There's a, a whole component where you can sign up for classes. If you do everything that's in that book, you're gonna know way more than me by the time you're, you're done with it. So, so that's why I recommend that book because it's kind of a Bible that, that can get you what you need to um, be well aware of uh, the things that you need to do to be successful. That's one. Uh, the second one would be the, the Lean Startup. Uh -huh, definitely. I love the Lean Startup because I feel like somebody was walking around behind us and taking notes uh, when they wrote that book because that's just really the way we do things. Uh, and, and it teaches you the, the theory that, you know, you don't build it and have a garage full of widgets anymore. You go out, you investigate, you, you engage an audience, you start collecting email addresses like we talked about, uh, and you use the excitement about the upcoming product to be able to actually fund in a pre-order basis uh, the manufacturing costs, the distribution costs that you're going to be incurring. So that, that book is a really, really, really good read. Um, and um, there is uh, one more book I, I think I'd recommend is um, it's called This is Marketing. You can't be seen until you learn to see. And that's by Seth Godin. Um, the reason I love that book is it goes into what I talked about earlier about being 
a successful entrepreneur. You know, nobody's going to see you until you're the one that's out there looking and understanding where your customers are and understanding what you have to do and say in order for them to, to find you. Uh, otherwise, when we're done building this amazing product, this great company that we've worked on together for a year or more, um, you're going to be this brilliant, beautiful star. But you're the star in this universe of billions of stars. You know, you got to get telescopes for people to see you and you have to point them in the right direction. Uh, that is something you should study day and night because that makes the difference between just being an entrepreneur and making a success of it. Find that customer, bring them to you, make them love you. The days of just uh, getting a repeat customer, those days are gone. Now you need customers that love you, customers that believe you're authentic, customers that can relate with what you're doing. That's what you need to create in the mystique that you create, uh, the authenticity of donating some of your profits to some charitable cause that's consistent with your brand. Those are the things that make little good companies big, great companies. And, and you'll get all that stuff in, in these materials. I love it. Well, we had so many comments. I know we went through our um, three questions for today, uh, but I do want to just recognize some of the people that have hopped on to the, to the live stream today because I know that we're going to be doing these on a regular basis. I want people to know that they can come back here and get use this as a resource. So I'm just going to start popping up some, some um, comments that people made real quick. Um, I'm Derek Moody. We have Susan Ambrose, and just stop me if you want to point out anybody in particular. Um, we have Nathan Lamister from Tyler, Texas, and yeah. we have, yeah, Nathan. so you can just say hi to him. I mean, the goals. Yeah, no, all, you, all these folks. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I just want to take a moment to recognize them for taking time and hopping on the live. So Timbo Brown from Phoenix. Um, so we have... Uh, let's see, we have someone from Detroit and we have Aziza and Aziza actually put in a couple comments. So thank you so much. Um, Aziza also said that she is very actively, uh, you know, learning from you and very um, appreciative of everything that you are doing. Uh, we have Rick let me, let me Let me pause for just a second yeah. too, because um, it really makes me proud to, to, to hear that from her because she works her ass off and she recently got a, got an MBA. Uh, she's not fooling around. And so uh, I, I love this woman and I, I love the product that, uh, that we're coming out with. And I know we're both going to be really proud of it and we're going to make it happen. Uh, so uh, so uh, exciting. Up to you, Aziza. <laughs> and she's from Cleveland, Ohio. And like you said, you're launching the product. Um, there are a couple things that I wanted to, I have a couple more people, Mary. Um, so I just want to kind of touch on everyone. Thank you again, everyone. I have Odin. Um, uh, that's Odin. Yeah. Looks Canadian. <laughs> Odin looks Canadian. <laughs> um, and then, uh, like just thank you guys all for hopping on. We are going to take the questions that you put into the chat and put them into our queue for the next set of questions. Um, a couple of big things that really exciting things that um, we have the launch pad and Fred, can you tell us a little bit about the launch pad and what's uh, coming up? I know you mentioned it in one of your, uh, in one of your comments, but I just want to yeah. kind of draw a little bit of attention to that. So with the launch pad, we're taking the kind of Harry's razor approach of collecting email addresses. But we're doing something, you know, one of those questions alluded to having limited budgets as, as a, a startup organization. And, and it's true. Uh, we, have, we have budgeting dollars for every single product that launches, but they, they are limited. They're not going to take you to a home run. You know, they'll get you started, they'll get people interested, and, and then you, you need to go viral. So what I came up with is basically a launch pad where we're going to take – four, eight, 12 of our products at a time, put them on our launch pad, which is on our own website, and take 20% of the rather significant marketing dollars that, that we spend every month and dedicate them just to that page and just to those products. Uh, it's obviously great for our partners because it highlights their, their, their product. It's gonna get it in front of tens of thousands of people and it's good for us too because it you know it helps show that in our partnerships we're building things and, and we're making things happen so it's a it's a win-win situation 
We also have a list of over 20,000 opt-in email addresses, people who applied to us. Uh, we've taken 193, I think, of those. But there's 20,000 people that applied that are still interested and, and, and want to learn more and want to work with us. And they're all entrepreneurs, too. And, and we're sending newsletters to all of them. It's like, you know, come support the tribe. We're all in this together. And, um, and we're having all these individual contests uh, for, for people. For example, you go and you sign up. That's great. High five. You sign up uh, five of your friends and, and you get a pretty significant discount. Ten of your friends, really big discount. If you get up to 50 people that you've brought in, then you get to participate on the Idea Pros leader board where you can uh, get up to $5,000. By, by going on the leaderboard. So we're encouraging people to not only like our uh, products, but to really spread the word around. Uh, every one of our partners can help in that regard too, because it's, if it's not your turn now, it's gonna become your turn. And you know, what, this is karma. Uh, you know, what, what, what you do well, somebody's gonna do well for you. Somebody's gonna owe you. So every one of our partners should really get on, on that webpage throw in as many email addresses as they can, get all their friends excited. It's only an email address, that's all you need. And when we do have a product, there are gonna be discounts that as high as 75% for the people who really hit it out of the park. Don't panic, Aziza, it's a small, <laughs> so it's a small percentage of people, but they deserve it, you know? And some of the real big leaders uh, are gonna get free product from us because we need the word to get out and, and you are the people that uh, will make that happen. Yeah, absolutely. I think we talked about this in um, one of our videos that we're producing too. We're producing amazing content for ideapros.com uh, slash blog. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we also talked about is that the plat the launch pad is actually a great way to, you know, position yourself with people who are doing what you want to do. So you put yourself in that, you know, you surround yourself by people who are accomplishing what you want to accomplish. So if you are a partner who's just in the first stages or you're a brand new entrepreneur that's looking at launching your products and just get involved. Like these people are amazing. The partners are amazing. It's just get yourself surrounded by the right people. So we'll put, um, as soon as that launches, we'll be letting everyone know. So if you are interested in getting more information from Idea Pros as we launch things, um, make sure to put a note in this post so that we can get more information out to you. Um, we also, like I said, have the blog. Um, some of the topics that Fred covered today uh, included like what your options are for funding. We have a whole article on it. Uh, great resources. We're going to have video content attached with all of those. So keep an eye on the blog and uh, do sign up for the newsletters through Idea Pro so you can get information as things breaking news comes about <laughs> yeah the, the 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 blog is a, is a good point tessa that's that that's uh, there's some really good stories there i have to tell you uh, i'm working harder than i ever have in my life and i'm doing that because i have this insane obligation to so many people who are depending on me who are depending on our company and who are working as partners to to try to make dreams come true and so uh, I'm up early in the morning, I'm working late at night, uh, and um, it's the most uh, frustrating, overworked, yet rewarding experience I've ever had in my life. And I wanna thank all of you who were gracious enough and who believed enough in, in me, in, in Idea Pros, to allow us to be your partner. And we're gonna continue work, working day and night in order to really maximize our joint opportunity for success. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Fred, for being, uh, for doing this live session with us. And uh, we'll definitely be doing this again. We're going to make it a, a routine. And I think it went Thank very you. well. I'm so appreciative of everyone who hopped on. We had actually 45 comments and about 38 people came on to give yeah. their thoughts, a 29 different views. So yes, I mean, it was amazing. Thank you guys so much. And we'll keep you posted with more. Take care. Thanks. Bye.